Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I wanted to try to take this sheet of G10 and turn it into a build surface for my Bamboo P1S 3D printer. There are a lot of benefits to printing on G10 and you can find a lot of videos about that subject, but basically I just wanted a glass smooth surface that is compatible with a wide variety of materials and Gerolite or G10 fits the bill perfectly for that. The problem is that G10 build surfaces for bamboo printers are very expensive. So I picked up this sheet of G10 for less than $20. It's about a millimeter thick. And what I'm going to try to do in this video is uh, cut it out to match the profile or shape of one of these bamboo uh, build plates. And these build plates, you could make a rectangular build plate, but the problem, the problem or, or the, the thing that makes this difficult is that um, the bamboo system uses this little tab here as a nozzle wiping area. And so it needs to be present on any build surface that you put into your printer. And that's going to be the challenge of making a bamboo build plate out of this sheet of G10. So what I think I'll do is just take you along for the journey. We'll see if it works out. And um, if it does, great. And, and what I can do is I can link down below all of the materials that I used in order to make this happen. This isn't going to be a simple project. Um, I'm sure you could cut it out um, pretty good with like a bandsaw or something. But I'm going to go a little bit farther and I'm going to use a laser cutter and a router with a pattern bit and maybe a little bit of the bandsaw. So this is by no means a simple project that is that you use simple tools with. I am going to be using some machinery to make this happen. But this is more of an experiment just to see if I can do it and to see if it'll work after I, I make it. So uh, if you're interested, stick around. Okay, so on Maker World, which is the Bamboo Labs uh, repository for 3D models, I found this Bamboo Lab build plate CAD file. So I'm going to go ahead and download the raw file here. And um, we have an STL and two different DXF files. I want the base with holes because I am going to try to machine the hole, one of the holes at least, in this uh, base. Okay, so it downloaded it. So now I'm going to open up Lightburn. And I'm going to open file, and I'm going to go to my downloads, go to vector files, there it is right there. All right, so here is the build plate, I loaded into Lightburn, it's probably very hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I have um, set up on my laser here, just a piece of scrap plywood. This is really cheap um, underlayment plywood that you can buy at, I think I got this at Lowe's for really, really cheap. And I make most of my routing templates out of this, um, especially if it's something that is a, like a one-off type deal. If I make a routing template, if I need a routing template for something that I'm going to make a whole bunch of, I'll start out by making one out of this thin stuff, and then I will route it out of something thicker, like this um, half inch MDF, something that will last a little bit longer. But for this, this is I'm expecting it to only be a one-off type thing, and so I'm going to use it for this project. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to frame So I can get my um, get my cut position properly. All right, that takes some time, but I think I finally got it dialed in. We're gonna find out. I'm just trying to be cheap and fit it on this piece of wood that's just barely bigger than than the shape, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna work out. Ok, 
you know, the piece has been cut out. Pardon the fan in the background, just trying to keep the smoke out. Now that the piece has been cut out, I'm going to remove the pattern without disturbing the rest of the uh, wood. Because this will be important for the future. So my intention is to use the router in this pattern to cut out the majority of the shape and then I'm going to use the laser um, to cut out this slot right here. I don't want to use the laser to do too much cutting on the G10 because it's just not a great material to burn through. Uh, you know, it creates lots of fumes and this shop is attached to my home and I don't want those fumes in abundance going throughout my house. So the majority of the work is going to be done on the router with the pattern and then just this little slot for this tab is going to be cut out with the laser and that's why I left the remaining wood here because now that I have that cut located where I want it to be, once I cut out the G10 sheet in this shape I can just drop it into here as a fixture and then have uh, set up light burn to just cut this slot right here. Okay, so I have my quarter inch spiral pattern routing bit installed and it's adjusted to the height where it will cut the G10 but it won't cut into the pattern. And um, now what I'm going to do is take some of this double sided tape and attach the pattern to the G10 and I might um, even reference a couple like maybe this square corner here as long as it is square and it'll just save me a little bit of hassle. Originally I was going to use the bandsaw to cut out cut off the excess, but I'm going to see how just cutting directly with the router works just because I don't want to sacrifice a bandsaw blade if I don't have to. And this G10 is hard enough to where it'll destroy any bandsaw blades that aren't carbide tipped. I usually always use dust collection with my router, but in this case I really want to make sure I use dust collection. So what I have is I've got my big cyclone dust collector and it runs through this piping, out the ceiling. It's actually in my, in my planer right now, but I can just take this hose and drop it right through here. And this, I have a, this uh, high-tech styrofoam cup adapter for my router table. Um, I can also collect the dust coming out of the, uh, the fence, but I find that pulling through the underside of the router table is more effective. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see, it's this little box inside here, and, uh, and this is a down cut, or I guess it's really, technically it's an up cut spiral bit, but it forces the chips down towards the um, router base and so this is going to be the most effective way to collect the dust that's generated by cutting this material. I almost forgot uh, in addition to all that I'm also going to be wearing some respiratory protection. <laughs> That cut beautifully. It cut a lot better than I was expecting it to. I'm gonna take a sanding sponge and here we'll try this guy. Just uh, knock the, the corners, the edge off. Just 
just so it doesn't have any sharp burrs or anything. And then as you can see, the running it on this table just scratched the crap out of it already. But that's okay, because <clears throat> I plan on sanding each surface uh, just to give it a little bit of holding power so it'll hold on to the prints pretty good. I'll probably just use this same gray scotch Bright pad because it seems to do a pretty good job. This Gorilla double-sided tape sure is sticky. Took some of the wood with it. Okay, next step is back at the laser. And before I forget, um, big shout out to Saga TXXX, who is the one that uploaded this DXF file of the build plate. Um, so thank you very much. I will provide a link to this model down in the description below in case any of you are interested in downloading this model for yourselves or even checking to see what other models he has created. And it looks like a lot, so very cool. Anyway, check them out down in the link in the description below. Okay, back to my light burn program. I'm just going to take this, this line here, which is the main profile of the plate, and delete it and just leave behind this little slot here. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and cut out this little detail up here, which doesn't really matter for anything. But since I'm already here, I might as well do it. I have no idea what cut settings I would need for G10. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my 3 16th wood profile and see if that is good enough. As you can see, it mostly drops back into the jig. I've got a problem with the wood. The wood actually it was warped. So get that out there. You didn't see it. The wood was warped inward, so I just pushed it out. There. Now the G10 drops into place. I need to autofocus my laser, so I'll use a piece of the off cut here. Get it lined up underneath the laser. Hit autofocus. Okay, I'm going to turn on the fan and execute the program and cross my fingers and we'll see how it turns out. I might have to do it in more than one pass. Okay, that did not cut through in one pass, so I'm going to have to go for a second pass. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to do one more pass. I'm going to increase the intensity of the laser. And slow down the speed. All right, so this is what we have. I could see smoke coming from the underside, so I know that I was breaking through a little bit. I just don't know how much, so. I think I might just need to clean these cuts up a little bit with a box cutter, and um, we'll see how they turn out. Not too shabby. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, I'm glad I chose to use the router to do the majority of the cutting because first of all, that G10 stinks when it cuts and I, 
I did some research before I jumped into this. I know that burning G10 can release harmful chemicals and it's bad for your health. And I, I understand all the risks involved. And I just wanted to make sure that you do too. So um, there are like, they use bromine, I guess, in the manufacturing of this stuff. And when you burn it, it releases into the smoke and that can be harmful to your health. So be careful if you decide to do any type of laser cutting or any cutting of this at all, because the the uh, fibers, um, you know, are, are very hazardous as well. So make sure you protect yourself if you mess with this stuff. So having said all of that, um, the laser cutting went well. It took a few passes. Uh, this is really resilient stuff, but the cuts turned out really clean, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, the reason I need this slot is, um, like I said, there's a the bamboo P1S that I own does a has a wiping routine that it does, and it it uses that little tab, and that tab has to have a little bit of flex to it, and so that's what that hole provides is it allows it to flex a little bit. My concern is is it won't flex as much as the steel plate is supposed to flex, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I can always disable that feature if I need to. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to take some 320 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand both, si both sides and uh, give it a matte finish. I already started on that one with the, with the gray scotch bright, but I'm, I'm going to do that on both sides just to give it a little bit extra tack um, for 3D prints to stick to it. And then once I'm done with that, we'll be able to test it. Okay, so I think that's enough sanding. Um, just gives it a nice matte surface. Um, and you gotta remember, anything that, any surface you print onto that, and if there's any pattern on it, it'll transfer to the underside of the print. So with these microscopic scratches in here, it'll either not transfer over because the scratches are too small, or if they do, it'll kind of give this, I, I sanded it in a crisscross pattern so it kind of gives it like a fabric looking uh, surface if it shows up at all. I'm just going to clean up the excess dust with some alcohol. Now we're ready to test fit it on the printer. Alright, so here's my plate. Here's my printer. I'm going to slide it in here. And that is a perfect fit. So, at least the model's good, and my laser's accurate. Now, the challenge, the new challenge that I'm facing here is that um, this is magnetic, and this is not, and so this is going to want to slide around on the surface. So I need to figure out a way to clamp this down um, and with minimal intrusion into the actual build surface. So that is my new challenge. I think I'm going to try to design and print something, some type of spring clips that hold on at various uh, locations around the perimeter of the build plate. Okay, here are the clips that I designed and printed. They're very small. I don't want them to take up too much bed space. I already got my G10 plate in place, and so now I just it's just a matter of snapping these clips into place. I made this one narrower so it'll fit through this hole. Kind of glad I uh, cut this hole now. Like that. Now, just with these two plates in place, or these two clips in place, the plate isn't wanting to go anywhere. But I got 
the, the thickness of the bed in the front is different than in the back, so I had to design a smaller clip for the back. These are a little bit more difficult to get on. Alright, there we go. Four, four clips on the plate. Should hold it good. Um, you can barely see them. They barely overhang. Now I'm going to do a quick test because there's a prime line that runs along the front here. And I want to make sure that these don't interfere with that. Um, but they hold it nice and tight. I like it. So, let's see, it looks like I cleared the purge line. This side for sure I cleared. This side, it's pretty close, but it cleared. I could probably adjust this over. Oh yeah, I, quite a bit. So, now it'll for sure clear that purge line. I picked this um, uh, print to test this with because um, this is the Benchy that comes preloaded on the Bamboo P1S and um, they've got the acceleration and the speed just turned up to the max. This thing just shakes like crazy and I figured if this if this surface can stay in place doing that Benchy, it's a 20 minute Benchy right there, um, then it'll stay in place for the conservative settings that I have set up for my prints. And one last, one last thing to do is to check the surface finish on the underside of the benchy. Oh, it's got a good grip on there. There we go. So, unfortunately, it decided to use the white because that's what's in position number one on my AMS. Um, and white does not show up on camera very well. But it is, um, it's super smooth and it's kind of like a matte finish, kind of like what the finish is here. So it's not a glossy smooth finish, finish it is a matte smooth finish. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'll try to get a picture of something else that I print on here. Um, and I'll insert it in the video so you can see on a larger piece what it looks like. So there you have it, a homemade G10 build surface for the Bamboo series of printers. It really ended up not being too terribly difficult. That stuff cuts on the router really, really nice. So that was a nice uh, surprise. But, you know, on the flip side, the laser really stinks up the joint. So I feel like I approached it in the right way with the right amount of caution. So some people are going to ask why I didn't just like glue or tape this to a spring steel build plate. And that is definitely a viable option. You can use some really thin like 3M double sided tape and it would probably do a good job at uh, attaching the G10 to a spring steel plate. But I only have the one spring steel plate right here and I didn't want to um, make it extra thick with this G10. And I wanted to prove that you can hold it down with some 3D printed homemade clips and it does a good job doing it. Now if I want to print something at a higher temperature with a higher print bed temperature, because this print bed can go up to 100 degrees C, that might soften the clips to the point where they don't hold, they lose their holding power. I'm not sure. I don't intend on using high temperature anytime soon. And if I do, I may not use it on the G10. I might. I don't know. 
but if anything changes or if I observe anything uh, out of the ordinary, um, I'll try to update in some way, probably video form. Well, I hope you like what I'm doing here, and if you do and you want to follow along, you can click that subscribe button down below and uh, follow me that way, and you can also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos come out. I will link all products and files that I used in this video down in the description box below. That way, if you're interested in trying this for yourself, um, you know, you'll have easy access to all the, all the things that I use to get to this point. I'll also make sure to upload the files for these clips in my Maker World profile. But just keep in mind that they only work for a 1.5 millimeter thick piece of G10. So if you want to use thicker G10, you'll have to either modify my files or make your own. So that wraps it up for this one. Thanks a lot for sticking around and watching to this point. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.